Hi there. Now for this part of the question, we're given that z equals r, all multiplied with cos theta plus i sine theta, where r is any real number. And we've got to prove by induction that z to the power n equals r to the power n, all multiplied with cos n theta plus i sine n theta, where n is any positive integer, for five marks. So if you'd like to have a go at this, just give you a moment to pause the video. When you come back, you might want to fast forward just to check your final answer, or I'll take you slowly through this method. Okay, welcome back then if you had a go. So I'm assuming that you're familiar with the proof by induction. If not, you can always check it out on my website. But what we do is we start with showing that it's true for n equals 1. And so when n equals 1, if we just substitute in here, we therefore have z to the power 1 equals r to the power 1 multiplied by cos of 1 theta, seems a bit tri trivial I know, but uh, plus i sine of 1 theta. And what does this simplify to? Well, z to the power 1 is z, r to the power 1 is r, and we multiply that with just simply 1 times theta, which is cos theta, and the same applies when we come to the sine, i sine theta. And so you can see that this agrees with what we've got up here, so therefore it's true when n equals 1. All right? So we now assume that this is true Okay, for n equaling a particular integer, let's say k. And so on that basis, we've got that z to the power k, using what we've got here, that z to the power k must be equal to r to the power k multiplied with cos of k theta plus i sine of k theta. Now, we need to prove that on this basis, if it's true for n equals k, it's true when n equals k plus 1. So we'll put in here when n equals k plus 1. So what would z to the power k plus 1 be? Well, z to the power k plus 1 is going to be z multiplied by z to the power k we would obviously add our powers here and get z to the power k plus 1. So this is going to be equal then to z, which we've got up here. And I'll just put this in brackets. z, which is r multiplied by cos theta plus i sine theta. And this is all multiplied with z to the power k. So if I assumed that z to the power k was equal to this, let's just put that in. r to the power k multiplied by cos k theta plus i sine of k theta. All right. Now, if I expand the brackets, we've got r times r to the k, which is going to be equal to r to the power k plus 1. And then, just put some square brackets here. Let's just take the real parts first of all. We're going to have cos theta times cos k theta. So, cos theta times cos k theta. We get another real part when we do i sine theta times i sine k theta. We've got i squared, which is negative 1, and so we end up with minus sine theta sine k theta. So that's that part. We'll just put that in brackets there, squeeze that in there. And then when it comes to the imaginary parts, we'll just put plus i here. And we get an imaginary part when we do cos theta times i sine k theta. So it's going to be cos theta sine k theta. 
And we also get an imaginary part when we do I sine theta multiplied with cos k theta. So that's going to be plus sine theta times cos k theta. Close that bracket off there like so. So if we come down here now, all right, and we'll just border that off across there. So we've got z of k plus 1. So therefore z of k plus 1 is equal to r to the power k plus 1. And this is multiplied by and we've got to be able to recognize this expansion here. This comes from expanding essentially the cosine of theta plus k theta. Okay, cos of theta plus k theta. Should be familiar with that identity, it often comes under the form the cosine of a plus b. Cosine of a plus b gives cos a cos b minus sine a sine b. Okay? And then when it comes to this part here, we should recognize this as the expansion of, and I'll just put the i there first of all, it's the expansion of the sine of theta plus k theta. We should recognize this as the sine of a plus b, which is sine a cos b, plus sine b cos a. Alright, I know I've got it just mixed up there, but obviously we should be able to see through that. So what have we got here then? Well, this is equal to r to the k plus 1. And I can rewrite this part here as the cosine of k plus 1 multiplied with theta and do exactly the same on the sine here as the sine of k plus 1 times theta. So this has got this particular structure when n equals k plus 1. So therefore if true for n equals k then I've shown that it's true for n equals k plus 1. So on that basis, if I say since true for n equals 1, we proved that was true up here, then true for the next integer up, true for n equals 2. And if true for 2, it must be equal to the next integer up from that, 3, and then 4, and so on. Okay? So therefore, it's true for all positive integers. Okay? So just illustrate that like so. Okay?